in the previous video, we talked about ways of remembering that the sine of negative x is equal to the negative sine of x, and that the cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of x. And while we talked about that, we talked about the fact that you would need to remember that the sine function is drawn with the axis in such a way so that the graph crosses the y-axis at the point zero, zero, right? We said you'd have to memorize that in order to know that this was the sine graph that you're dealing with. But actually, you don't need to memorize that. You could also, just through your own understanding of the unit circle, figure that out. So, let's say we had an angle here, x, that we drew to be very, very small. So this is the angle x in there, very small. We see that for this very small angle x, that this opposite side here gets very small. Now, if I were to draw this angle x even smaller, like, let's say, that small, that you would s see that this opposite side is even smaller still, right? Very, very small. So as x gets closer to 0, this opposite side also gets closer to 0. And as we talked about in the last video, the sine of x is just the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And since the hypotenuse of the unit circle is 1, we end up with the opposite side, right? So we could just write here sine of x. So, in order to write that very clearly, as x gets closer to 0, the sine of x gets closer to 0. And you can see that in the graph, that where x is indeed 0, then the sine of x is also 0. So that's how you can remember that that crosses at the origin. There's a similar phenomenon for cosine. So if this is the graph of cosine, then we would need to have the y-axis at this point, right, crossing over at the high point, at the maximum point of the cosine graph. And similarly, you do not need to memorize that. You can just look at the unit circle and imagine drawing a very, very small angle here. So x is getting very close to 0. And if x is very close to 0, then the adjacent side in this triangle is getting awfully close to 1, right? And we said that the cosine of x is just the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And since the hypotenuse in the unit circle is 1, then the adjacent side is just the cosine of x. So basically, the cosine of x is just this entire side here as x gets very, very small. So as x gets closer to 0, the cosine of x gets closer and closer to its maximum value, which in this case is 1. And you can see that in the graph here, that when x is equal to 0 here, cosine has its maximum value of 1. Sine also has a maximum value of 1, of course, but it doesn't happen at x equals 0. Right. One other thing we talked about in the last video was the idea of an even or an odd function. and We talked about that not all functions are even or odd, so let's look at an example of that. Let's define this function to be x to the third plus x squared. Now, I want to know, is that even, or is it odd, or is it perhaps neither? So in order to determine that, we want to look at f of negative x, right? So if f of negative x is equal to the negative f of x, then we would have an odd function. And if f of negative x 
would be equal to simply f of x, then we would have an even function. So we want to see if one of those two things is indeed the case. So let's look at f of negative x. f of negative x is equal to, now I'm just going to put negative x into this into this function here, plus negative x squared. Now that just simplifies to negative x to the third plus x squared, right, since these two minus signs here cancel. And if I want to know whether it's odd or not, then I'll have to check whether that's the same as negative f of x. So let's look. Negative f of x is equal to negative, and then I just fill in this function here, right? x to the third plus x squared equals negative x to the third minus x squared. And we see that this is not the same, right? So this is not an odd function. Now, if, if, if it's to be an even function, then this value here, f of negative x, would have to be equal to f of x. But we know that f of x is equal to x to the third plus x squared, right? That's, that's just filling in the function here. And we see that this here is not the same as this. So this is also not an even function. This function is neither even nor odd. Now one last point that we talked about in the last video was rotational symmetry. We talked about the fact that one could imagine a knob here at the origin and then you could turn this graph so that a particular point on one side of the graph would be turned to the point that it covered the point at a different point in the graph. right? And at the same point, if you turn it around, would return to that point. Now that's one way of imagining it. Another way of imagining it would be to draw that on a piece of paper. And you could imagine this selection that I'm making here as a piece of paper and then just turn your paper, which is what we're going to try now. I have a button here that says turn. That's written in German there, drehen. That means turn. And I'm going to turn this 90 degrees to the left and then another 90 degrees to the left. Uh, well, I say to the left, I should say counterclockwise. And once I get to 180 degrees, you should see that the graph is the same as it is now. So now, on the count of three, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise. And now, on the count of three again, I'm going to rotate it another 90 degrees. And we see that we have the original graph. So that is what you call rotational symmetry, because I can rotate that and get the same picture. Now, if I try that with this picture here, with this graph, it's not going to work. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise, and then another 90 degrees counterclockwise, one, two, three. And you see, we don't end up with the same thing. Now, if I rotate it again 90 degrees counterclockwise, and then again 90 degrees counterclockwise, then I end up, of course, at the beginning. But at no point in the middle, did I ever end up with the same graph that I had originally. So if you have a graph with this characteristic, as we noted in the last video, of rotational symmetry, that is known as an odd function. And sine was our example of that. And if you have a graph like this, it's an even function. And an example of that was cosine. And remember, that the defining characteristic of this type of symmetry was that the left side is a mirror image of the right side. Or as I said here, 
the right side is a mirror image of the left side, or maybe I already said that. So that is a short filling in a few of the gaps in the first video so that you can remember that the sine of negative x is equal to the negative sine of x and that the cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of x.